Hello everybody on YouTube and welcome back. This is Ty with another video. And uh, what I'm showing you here is my uh, Xbox 360 arcade cabinet that I've built. Um, what this started life as is a uh, Simpsons, uh, four-player Simpsons arcade game that had been stripped of its, of its guts and the uh, side art was in um, really bad shape. It had been, um, it was completely faded, damaged. And then the uh, operator had taken uh, a dark blue navy paint and painted around the outside of all the characters to kind of like make it look better. Um, the uh, corners on the cabinet were broken. Um, I had to repair the cabinet. Um, I had to paint the cabinet, repair the cabinet, do a lot of things to it to uh, even get it into a, a decent looking shape. Um, pardon the really close up um, view of this right now. Um, this flip camera, while it's uh, HD, I can't get a very wide shot of anything. I'm actually standing about 10 feet away from the cabinet right now, and the camera still, you can't see the whole thing. But I assume that it's probably, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably better to look at this in HD. I can always pan the camera up and down for you so you can see. So I'm going to just take a look here. Here's the bottom. And as you can see, it's got a dual to coin door still. That's from it being a four-player game. Um, right now, the uh, coin mechs are non-functional. There's no need for them to be on an Xbox 360. As you go up a little bit here, here's the control panel, and um, I'll talk about it a little bit in a moment. But um, then you got the, that's a, a VGA 29-inch uh, um, monitor that's inside the cabinet. Original one was a, or it's a 27, I think. Yes, it's 27. The original monitor is actually a 25, but I was able to fit a 27 in there. It was a little work to get in there. And uh, as for the marquee, this is this is primarily a utilitarian cabinet. I'm not, I didn't make this thing to be, you know, like the ultimate cabinet it's just something to play my xbox 360 in so what i did is i stuck a uh, street fighter 2 turbo marquee in there for now i don't know if i'll make something custom for it i really um i don't like it when people make it uh for some reason like i like it when i did it with a virtual boy but I, if i made a marquee it said xbox 360 i don't know if i'd like that or not so I, I i actually stuck a real game marquee in there for now um and there's still a little repair work i need to do along the top of the marquee of the cabinet someone try to pry it open um, I'm going to get to doing that too, but I have other projects I'm working on, so this is technically finished for now. I'll go back and tweak it a little bit here and there. So uh, what I'm going to do is go take this off the uh, tripod now. I'm going to move in closer. Bring the tripod with me because I might need it later. Okay, so here's the, I'll just give you a side. You can't really see the side too well in this lighting, but um, the whole side has been repainted. Had I had to fill it in quite a bit. And I'll talk about that damage here. As you can see up here, the cabinet's been damaged a little bit. I need to fill that in and repaint it. Also, this T-molding I have not replaced yet. It's still black. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to change that to white. And the marquee here is not quite wide enough, so you can see that light bleeds out a little bit on the edges over on this side as well. But I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably just going to... Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. Probably put something black, some black paper or something along in the, inside there. Um, down to the control panel. Um, what I used for inspiration when I was making this was, um, I don't know if you, um, anybody, I'm sure you guys have seen this if you're anybody, anybody who likes Street Fighter 4. Um, in Japan, they, the Street Fighter 4 is on a, in a cabinet made by Taito, and it's called a, a Vulix, is the actual V-E-W-L-I-X, however you, you would pronounce that. And the uh, color scheme of it is a, um, is black, white, and then um, uh, red adenized aluminum. And uh, so as I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, I'm going to kind of do that theme a little bit on this cabinet. I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not trying to make this be that cabinet because obviously it's not. This is a more traditional American style arcade cabinet. But for a color scheme, I just thought I would use this for as kind of like a reference of what I was going to do. So um, what this control panel is, is I actually had to create this whole control panel new, new here because... When I got the cabinet, it didn't even have a control panel on it, so I had to cut a control panel based on some measurements someone had given me. And as for drilling the holes, I'm going to actually show you what I did here. Go over here to my resources. For the layout, I used this. This is a, a Capcom drill template. And what I did is I actually... Um, Added, had to add some additional buttons for the 360. So I measured out the equal distance for another set of buttons here, and then I put another two set of buttons over top of these, up to the left and right of this one here. And that's what I used for the drill template for the uh, control panel. Um, 
but the control panel itself, the way it's constructed is, um, you know, just regular particle board. And then on top of the particle board, I used a very thin um, aluminum flashing that you would have on like the edge of a house or something. So it has kind of like a stainless steel look to it. Um, I took the aluminum flashing and then I used a 3M Super 77 and I glued it down to the, down to the cabinet, I mean down to the control panel before I drilled any of the holes. And uh, once, then once I drilled that, then I, I, I trimmed it, I rough trimmed along the edges here to trim it down. And then I used this uh, plexiglass. Now this plexiglass is really unique and uh, um, it's hard to show it right now because I don't have a black light in this area. My black light's over there right now. Um, I'm probably going to move this cabinet. But when it, um, this is called uh, fluorescent red plexiglass. And it has a, right now it looks pink. It really depends on the light and you see the edges light up on it. Um, get in there a little bit closer. Um, when the when a black light hit it, hits it, this thing glows like crazy. It looks really cool. And I originally, I wasn't thinking that I was going, I wasn't thinking about using this fluorescent red plexi. I was actually looking for just regular red plexi. So I would use the aluminum and the red plexi on top of it to get a red anodized look to it. Because to buy, I don't even know where I would buy red anodized aluminum to, uh, to do the control panel. And I still would have to put plexi on top of it. So I thought, well, if I get red tinted plexi, you won't be able to see the difference. So while I was looking, I actually ran across this uh, um, fluorescent red plexi. And it's, it's really actually quite awesome. Um, see, if you get on here, like it depends on the angle which the light's hitting it. Its color changes. Um, you can see the sheen from the uh, aluminum there. Um, and uh, I had to put a little decoration on here. What I did, I, I took a Street Fighter II logo and I printed this on transparency film and I just stuck it in between the uh, plexiglass and the, the aluminum just to put some, some kind of artwork on there. I got the Street Fighter up here. I got the Street Fighter down there. Um, as for the buttons, these are IL brand buttons. Um, they're made in Spain. Um, HAP. Duplicate Cap has uh, licensed the uh, the buttons. They're essentially a HAP competition, but they're with a higher quality. They come with a cherry switch, and I did uh, the standard six buttons in white, and then the the other two buttons in black. Same thing up here to kind of minimize their appearance. The uh, start button is a one player embossed one there, and a two player one embossed here. Um, and the joysticks are IL brand joysticks. Um, I really like the IL, IL brand uh, competition. They're called IL Euro sticks, and they're they're comparable. I mean, the, the comparable joystick would be the HAP competition. And in pre previous reviews I've had, I've talked about these joysticks. And I, I at the time I was of the mind that the HAP joysticks, if you change the, uh, I'm gonna flip this up here, right here in the center. If you look here, this part that moves around, that's this. The square plastic piece right here that's that's called the, the actuator you see how that easily spins there like that that is a, um that's an IL, il one and you'll see that everything here is made out of uh, uh sorry my camera works not so good here is made out of white nylon right here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a different stick i'm going to go over here these are hap ones in my uh mar versus capcom now i've replaced the um this the uh actuator part with an IL, IL one, but you'll see that in between here, the part that it sits on is actually black plastic, and it, it, it's, it has a little bit of rougher movement to it. It's, it's, it's better, and actually it's much better than if I had, the original hap ones are all black PVC plastic, um, and they don't, they don't function nearly as well. So it it's, comes down to just the quality of the parts. They're identical design, but it just does not play the same. So, um, I, from now on, I just buy the IL sticks. So sec secondarily, is you get a color matching washer. If you buy a half one, they're all black, um, which is fine if you're buying a black stick. But if you're buying a color, it kind of looks—it doesn't go as nicely as if you got a color matched one. Um, and uh, as well, I'm going to show you something else I did here. Um, what you're looking at here are some additional joystick shafts, and uh, a lot of guys like the feel of. Uh, of the Japanese sticks, and this is just kind of to see whether it's just the ball top or if it's something more than that. So I have the I have this the E clip off on this one, so I can just pull this joystick right out. So I can take this. 
insert like that. Oops. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this back on the tripod. You guys. Okay, so. All right. Okay, so I took the original one out. I'm gonna just. No, I got two hands free. I can do this better. So I put the this joystick in with this, and now I've got an, a. That's actually a, a Sanwa ball top on on this. So we've got an aisle stick. The washer doesn't fit quite as well. So it's not as attractive, but I could also cut a, a washer that fits the shaft a little bit better here. But it's a what you're looking at there is a Sanwa ball top and an aisle stick. And um, additionally. Um, You'll see that it's a little bit taller than, than it would be if it were an IL, IL uh, joystick. And I, I might customize these a little bit more. All i got to do is put some extra rings on the shaft. But if you take this piece off here and put it back in, the joystick will sit lower. And that's more along the lines of how a, an actual IL ball top would be sitting in the, in the system. Looks like I actually unplugged one of the wires. Sure did and plug the ground wire when I was messing with it. Bear with me, everybody. There we go. So, so there you go. There's the. What I want to do is get some of my friends that actually. Uh, you prefer to use a sand stick and just to give this a try out and see how they feel playing it like this. Um, to move on a little bit further with this, I'm going to put this joystick back in. But I have I have three of these shafts here. I only got two ball tops because that's all I need. But um, this one I have the additional rings, the e clip rings, uh, cut in this one, which I'll cut in the other one. Okay, so I'm going to move on now um, to the insides of the cabinet a little bit. So if we open up the uh, control panel here, um, I've took this is this is actually using a PC uh, amplifier with, with a subwoofer, which is sitting down in there. You can't see because it it's dark, but um, you can control the volume right here. I just have this mounted right there. And there's the, the monitor control remote board. Um, as for the joystick controls, this one, the Player Two. Joystick is actually a um, a Mad Cat's uh, um, six button control. Well, not six. Well, it actually is eight. Is it eight buttons? Um, yeah, it's eight button control pad right there. Um, and uh, I wired that into the controls here. And then on this side, I'm using something different. This is actually out of um, one of those uh, uh, Street Fighter Four Mad Cat's uh, joysticks. That's got the. Uh, it looks just like something out of a arcade cabinet in Japan. I don't know what the model is, but what I, uh, for a friend of mine, actually took this uh, unit out, the part that actually, the wiring for the uh, for the Xbox controller, and put a, a PS360 in it for him, and uh, which would allow the joystick to work on an Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 3 as well as a PC. And uh, he said, just go ahead and keep the guts. So um, it's a lot easier to wire this thing up because it's it's already wired to mount with joystick controls. So I used it on on this side. And uh, this one here, as you can see, there's a lot of a lot of soldering and hot glue going on there to get that all mounted up nicely. But they both work well. Okay, so now close the control panel up. We're going to talk about how we get the games in here. And it's actually you see the the speakers are right here. It's using this the speakers right out of the cabinet. So if we go down here to the uh, left side control panel. Uh, um, coin door here. We've got the Xbox 360. We just press the button, open the door, and let's put a little Street Fighter 4 in here. Okay. And just to show you, here's my pathetic Xbox 360 collection of. Um, Eight games total. I'll probably pick a few more up, but uh, 
I don't really play the Xbox so much, and I only have PS, uh, a PS3. Um, but there's some really good arcade games for the Xbox, and I, I bought a few of those. So that doesn't really, you know, count. But there's a few more that I'd like. But as you can see, I get a lot in. Oh! Turn this down a little bit. All right. Let's get a little gameplay in here for you guys. Street Fighter Four. <laughs> I got something else on plug too. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a little bit of the gameplay on this. I don't know if there's a lot much more to show. Um, I also have a... Uh, um, I have a home uh, UPnP um, server set up in the house. Oops. So I could... Uh, let's see if this is something. No, 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 videos in that one. Of course, the Xbox doesn't support everything. Let's see if I got something I can. So, if I wanted to, I could watch video on this as well, too. Not that it would make a lot of sense to watch video on a uh, arcade cabinet, but it could be done. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I don't really have a lot more to show on this, uh, um, but I appreciate you, you watching. And uh, stay tuned because I have some more exciting projects that I'm working on, ones that are uh, I'm putting a lot more effort into than this one. This one was just more for me. It's not like the uh, my uh, Virtual Boy, which was you know dedicated to uh, Gunpei San, and uh, you know, I've also got, you know, some you know, my other cabinets here, too, that I'm working on, too, always. But, you know, here's a little, you want a little secret glance of what I'm working on. Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that over there? Oh, 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 what's that there? Oh, okay. Don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but anyways, um, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, 
I'll talk to you again.